Overclocking television at Intel booth in the business center on the third day. We're here, the second official day at CBIT. Along with us, we got Mr. Stephen Peterson, in director of Intel Chipset and Platform Marketing. And we're about to look at the Golf Town, the upcoming Golf Town platform from Intel. Steve, can you please tell us a bit about the platform? Yeah, first of all, thanks, Mark, for having me here. Um, I, what I'd like to tell you is that I want to be careful not to drop that one. Uh, that What we just showed you is the Intel Gulf Town uh, wafer. Uh, that is our six-core 12 threaded uh, uh, microprocessor designed for uh, enthusiasts, gamers, multimedia uh, fanatics. Uh, it really is something special. It's, uh, you know, it's a performance level previously unseen in the industry and we're extremely excited. I think you know some of the features your your viewers are, are uh, pretty uh, educated in terms of, of what they know about products and product lines but the one thing that I'd like to make sure that they understand is when we when we engineer these products mediocrity is isn't something that we're interested in. We're truly interested in delivering the best of the best. And this is Intel's 32 nanometer uh, fab process. Uh, it really is designed to be the fastest performance solution on the planet. Uh, we feature uh, Intel Turbo Boost technology, which allows power to be driven to each individual core as required. So a massively threaded application will uh, have all the cores running at um, a, a frequency. But if, a, if an application is less threaded, maybe it's two threads or three threads, we can power up two or three threads and really get the most performance for that application. Great. Steve, um, it sounds like an interesting call with six processors and 12 threads. How much uh, power does it consume? Well, it's, uh, it really is designed to be a high-end desktop system, and so what you'll typically see is a, you know, a system that's uh, running off of a, you know, a higher-end power supply. Uh, you know, usually uh, paired up with a performance graphics card. Uh, you know, the exact power consumption is something that we'll, you'll, you'll have to find out when we actually launch the product, but it's, it's not meant to be a, a uh, you know, mobile type platform. It's really meant to be an extreme gaming multimedia solution. Uh, Steve, from the internet we've seen that there'll be a model i7-980X, but there's also a lot of Cyan processors. Can you please tell us about, about the range that Intel is targeting. Right, so uh, if you understand a little bit about the family of Intel processors and how we develop products, uh, the Gulf Town processor is actually an ancestor of our workstation and server product line. So the design was developed in, in the workstation server space. So a broad, away, a, a broad array of solutions for workstation server will be brought out uh, based on the Xeon process. So there'll be many different products brought out for Xeon. Uh, on the desktop side, we will have a couple of different products available. Uh, again, targeted at those high-end gamers, media enthusiasts, etc. Uh, there, there will be a, a, a family available for the desktop. Great. Um, can you tell us anything about the entry level as for price for Golf Town? Um, I can't. Um, I can, what I can tell you is that we are really, really close to the launch. Uh, really, really close. And so you will be seeing these products available very shortly from system OEMs worldwide. Um, the, the platform was developed using an existing X58 motherboard infrastructure. Uh, so the, the boards that you see out there today or that you've invested in can be reused uh, based on a minor BIOS change, take these new processors and really get that uh, performance benefit of those six cores and 12 threads. Yes. But uh, with the range of uh, the new processors, uh, is there a small level as well, or is it only the big processor that we know, the i7 series? Um, you're, you're typically going to see i7 type products. Again, I, I can't get into the details. Uh, again, the launch is very close. Very, very close. Uh, which leads me to, is there any further details on the launch? Well, what I can say is that uh, we have ship production product broadly to the marketplace. Uh, again, with the motherboard infrastructure already in place, uh, building up of systems, developing those, getting them built, shipped to retail outlets, uh, all of those things are in process right now. And so you're going to see uh, the, the launch imminently. The, the readiness is, is, the, is there for the most part. Uh, unfortunately, or fortunately for some, there's a new media, really time-consuming one, Facebook. On Facebook, we've seen lots of results from Golf Town already, more than 400 in fact. It appears that there's being made new revisions all the time. 
Is Intel planning to release new re uh, revision before launch or will it be the B1 which is the newest? Okay, so first and foremost, all of you out on Facebook that are releasing these results, I want to get an NDA so you can't, pr uh, no, just kidding. Um, yeah, so I, I understand that there's been uh, some results produced. Uh, what I could say is the production stepping is shipping today. Uh, uh, what that stepping is, again, you're, you'll have to find out when we release the specifications. Um, but I do expect that the product itself will be an uh, extremely powerful solution that overclocks very well for the, the enthusiast segment. Uh, seen results, you know, well over 6 gigahertz today. I would expect that with the right cooling, with the right system architecture, that you will be able to achieve results, you know, in that range uh, with that Gulf Town processor. So, honestly, I think everybody out there who's thinking about buying one of these, you're really going to get great usage over a long period of time. This product is designed for a the, the future of computing with you know massively threaded applications. Thank you. That leads me to another question. Okay. As well from the internet. <coughs> Fortunately not on it's Facebook. A powerful tool. Isn't <laughs> yeah, the internet. the internet is a great thing. We heard <laughs> the rumor about Sugar Bay. Can you please tell us what is Sugar Bay? Um, so so in, at Intel, we, we before we go to market with a product line, we have product code names, and then we have platform code names. And so Sugar Bay is a platform code name uh, Intel has provided. Uh, it's targeted at our 2011 product line. Uh, that product line is a uh, your CPU, chipset, you know, the whole thing, right? LAN devices, all the things that you need for client computing, for workstation server computing. It's based off of our existing 32 nanometer process. Uh, Intel has a philosophy around, we call it TikTok, where we take our new microarchitecture, which is coming in 11, and we prepare that on an existing known process. This allows Intel to, to really quickly ramp manufacturing and bring product to market in the kind of quantities that the world expects from our product line. So we go from zero to 60 mile an hour uh, as fast as a you know Porsche 928 or whatever, right? 929. Uh, another question in that relation, since it's the same platform, uh, will the PCI Express not be in the chip and in the Northbridge? Um, PCI Express, you're talking about graphics or? The link, the which link on, on uh, IPEX Peak is in the processor. Yeah, so uh, when you look at what we have for IPEX Peak and Clarkdale, the existing product line for i3, i5, i7, uh, we have moved memory controller, we've moved um, uh, the graphics into the CPU. And so you should expect to see that continue with future products from Intel. Thank you, and we have a final question for you. We noticed from the result, once again, from Facebook, that the memory handling of the new Golf Sound is better. Which kind of results has Intel experienced so far? Um, so, uh, generally speaking, uh, the when, when we look at our products that we actually bring to market, um, we, we set our plan of record, the, the what we actually support uh, broadly across the industry, uh, at a at a fairly conservative uh, mark. Our, our intention is that you know every single memory module that exists in the marketplace that plugs into an Intel platform will run at the stated plan of record frequency across thousands and thousands of hours with the most intensive applications. So that's how we set our plan of record. Right, that's designed to be highly stable uh, in any kind of computing environment. As we move into the overclocking arena where people are really pushing the envelope, we also understand that because we put so much effort into making uh, very stable solutions at a given plan of record, that by definition we will have uh, great overclockability and, and stability up well beyond our plan of record. And so when you look at our upcoming platforms, you can expect them to behave much like our existing products behave, where the plan of record is very conservative, but it's designed to be that, you know, 200 million unit, 200 million PC kind of reliability, whereas people who are overclocking really are going to get a, a very interesting experience when they crank up their modules. Uh, how, of course, things like thermals are going to make a big difference, right? So the cooler you can build your machine, machine the higher you're going to get from a frequency perspective. I believe that's not a problem for our viewers. Over and out from CBIT, thank you for paying attention. Thanks, Mark.